This is the world of medieval Europe, and medieval Europe was dominated by Christianity, which was centred in the city of Rome. From Rome the church shaped all the most important aspects of life, from the cradle to the grave. The church purified you through baptism, educated you through confirmation, conducted your weddings, heard your confession, gave you your last rites, oversaw your funeral at death, and most significantly gave you access to the bread of communion, the body of Christ needed for your eternal salvation and allowing you to commune with God and the wider Christian world. For your average medieval peasant, staying in good connection or communion with the church was essential. They believed that those with a really good relationship with God were holy and would go straight to heaven. Those that were known to be holy were called saints and celebrated as models of virtue. Those who died in a state of mortal or really bad sin and outside of this communion were doomed to eternal damnation and torture in hell. For most people, however, the expectation was that they would neither be holy or condemned, and that their involvement with the rituals of the church guaranteed their eventual entry to heaven. In the meantime, however, they had to wait it out in a place called purgatory, which would literally purge or cleanse them of any remaining sin through punishment. The amount of time you spent in purgatory depended upon your spiritual bank vault. The more holiness you had accumulated through the rituals of the church, the more spiritual credit you would accumulate and the less time you would spend in purgatory. Confession was vital for this process, as it allowed you to identify particular sins and would let a priest give you directions for penance, the act of making up for those sins. Penance was usually doing something especially religious or even outright unpleasant now to further reduce time in purgatory later. It could include things like repeated prayer formula, making a pilgrimage, or visiting relics, which were supposed to be physical remnants of those really holy people we mentioned earlier, saints. Doing enough penance could take hundreds or thousands of years off your time in purgatory. Now most people weren't educated enough to question the teachings of the church and so didn't know any different. But in Bohemia, the modern day Czech Republic, living in the city of Prague, there was a priest named Jan Hus. Hus was educated and could read the Bible, and he started questioning church practice, particularly in relation to communion. For this, the church judged him a heretic and burned his sins from him at the stake. The church didn't like people questioning its absolute hold over Europe. This is why it's so fascinating that only 100 years later, in the Holy Roman Empire, modern Germany, another monk who questioned many of the practices of the church not only didn't get burned at the stake, but changed the way that people did Christianity forever. So let's look more closely at the story of Martin Luther. Luther's story begins at Eisleben, the town he was born in. His parents were Hans, a copper miner, and Margrit. They wanted their son to advance the family's social status by becoming a lawyer. So they sent him off to study law at Erfurt. Shortly into his studies, Luther found himself caught out in a storm, and he promised God that if he was saved, he would become a monk. As a monk, Luther obsessively sought to feel forgiven through constant confession and acts of penance. His confessor, Johann von Staupitz, thought this wasn't healthy and believed that Luther's troubles would be eased through a pilgrimage to the heart of the church, Rome. In Rome, Luther would be able to visit relics and perform penance, letting the holiness of the place soothe his religious angst. However, he discovered that vices like prostitution and gambling were everywhere and became somewhat disillusioned seeing that no one else appeared to take their faith seriously. As he was in the midst of his penance, he found himself questioning, does any of this really work? Dalpitz then decided to channel Luther's frustrations into study. He had Luther appointed as a lecturer at Wittenberg University, a place of learning sponsored by Friedrich the Wise, the Prince Elector of Saxony, who was famed for his collection of saintly relics. Luther was soon busied with academic life, forced to think through and wrestle with the lessons he had to teach his students, while also performing duties as a priest at the local churches. Amidst his work, he soon learned of the efforts of another monk by the name of Johann Tetzel, who was on a mission from the Pope. Tetzel had been given the job of selling what were called indulgences. Indulgences were tickets out of purgatory, and people could obtain one by paying a substantial sum. Since people were terrified of the potential for long suffering, they eagerly took up his offer. Indulgences were also offered for relatives, so people could alleviate the suffering of their deceased parents and grandparents. 
Indulgences were allowed by the Pope, Leo X, who saw in them an opportunity to raise money for the building of the new basilica, St. Peter's in Rome. Now Luther's studies in the Bible as a lecturer had led him to see that there was no biblical evidence for such indulgences, and he wanted to know where the Pope got his authority from. He wrote a pamphlet and distributed it to other academics. Legend says nailed it to the door of the cathedral, but this is questioned. In his pamphlet, known as the 95 Theses, he laid out what he thought were the key issues with indulgences. They took German money for a project in Rome, seemingly gave the Pope authority over the afterlife, and placed an emphasis on the works of literally paying for your sins, rather than trusting in God to save you from peril. Luther's ideas were quickly copied and distributed, thanks to the invention of the printing press. This in turn led to widespread discussion of his ideas, leading him and his followers into debates across the German territories. The Pope, sick of Luther's criticism, ordered him to renounce his teaching, or be excommunicated, removed from communion with the Church, in an official document called the Papal Bull. Luther burned the bull in response, for which he was called to trial at the Imperial Council, or Diet, in the city of Worms. Here he would answer to the Holy Roman Emperor, who would be advised by the Pope's representatives. The trial went poorly, and after learning he was to be found guilty, Luther fled the city. However, he was kidnapped by agents of his employer, Friedrich the Wise, who took him to a secret hiding place, Wartburg Castle, where agents of the Pope couldn't reach him. Here, Luther disguised himself as a knight and spent his time translating the Bible from Latin and Greek into German so that everyone could read it. In Luther's absence, thousands of peasants integrated his ideas of questioning the authorities into their hopes for outright revolution, not just against the Pope, but against all authority, including his protector Friedrich. Proving that he was no perfect human specimen, Luther called for the death of the peasants who were against God's orders, perhaps being a little self-serving in the process. Luther did indeed have a temper and some inbuilt biases. On this ugly side, as time went on, he wrote pretty horrible things about Jews and also about reformers who were more radical than himself, called Anabaptists. Luther wanted a controlled, ordered reformation and didn't like challenges to his preferred way of doing things. Later in life, Luther married an ex-nun, Catherine von Bora, who allegedly escaped her convent in a wagon load of barrels. Together they settled down in the old Augustinian monastery in Wittenberg, where he continued to write and preach and expanded on more constructive ideas in the company of his friends at dinner times. One of these friends was another Wittenberg academic, Philip Melanchthon, who did some of the work that Luther, now an outlaw in Catholic lands, could not do. In what was called the Augsburg Confession, Melanchthon presented to the Emperor an outline of Lutheran beliefs. This document paved the way for official recognition of the Lutheran Church. What allowed Luther to succeed where Hus did not? The printing press was a major factor, as the relatively new technology allowed his ideas to spread quickly throughout Europe. It also aided in various forms of propaganda, pamphlets, pub songs and cartoons, which, expressed in German, enabled common people to more readily identify with his ideas. Secondly, the protection of Friedrich and the other Protestant, meaning protesting princes, gave Luther a safe haven. Their support also led to the large-scale conversion of people to the new religious expression of their Protestant rulers. With a support base behind him and his new ideas spreading rapidly through technology, Luther's lifelong quest to reconcile church life and the Bible therefore opened the way for other reformations and changed the political and religious landscape in Europe forever.